week, our featured guest is in the health and wellness space and has a brand new business that recently opened in West Hollywood. Today, we have Garth Hewitt, who is the owner of Shiva Yoga Practice, joining us in conversation. Garth is a teacher trainer, yoga therapist, certified yoga works teacher, certified Dharma yoga teacher, and has led classes, workshops, retreats, and teacher trainings in Los Angeles and around the world. Garth taught for several years at the original Yoga Works in Santa Monica and at Exhale Yoga in Venice. He led the first pure yoga teacher training in Los Angeles at Equinox with Ashley Turner. He has been featured in and contributes regularly to Yoga Journal, Yoga Journal China, Yoga Journal Japan, Men's Health, Health Magazine, Mantra Magazine, Yoga Life Magazine Dubai, Yoga and Wellness Dubai, Yoga Anonymous, LA Yoga, Yoga in China, and Shanghai Daily News. Garth is the creator of the Shiva Yoga style of yoga. His signature Shiva Vinyasa Shiva Flow and Shiva Power classes focus on setting intentions, practicing gratitude, finding balance, and quieting the mind. Garth is also the owner of the Mama Kuka. Let me take, sorry, let me take that over. Garth is also the owner of the Mama Kuka Yoga Props, Props Company, founder of the Yoga Sphere and the Yogi Pro Kit and Progressive Yoga Strap System, and the director of the Shiva Yoga Practice Online Yoga Studio and Platform. Welcome to We Know We Hope, Garth Hewitt. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction and uh, giving your listeners so much information um it's yeah it's really wonderful to just uh you're, you're taking me through all these different things that i had a little trip down memory lane there i was like oh yeah that's right i i've contributed to that magazine too and oh yeah that's right so thank you for the lovely introduction it's, it's really exciting to be here and i'm so grateful that you reached out um we are the you know the new business on the block with Shiva Yoga opened um, just one month ago. And so it's just, it's been wonderful to be here in West Hollywood so far. And I'm loving all of the little connections in the neighborhood and, and you know, others like yourself that have just been so welcoming to the neighborhood. So it's been a great experience so far. Oh, well, that's so good to hear. I have so many, I have a couple questions about that as we kind of launch into things. And Garth, I want to thank you for joining us today because as a new newly opened business in west hollywood i know that you're super super busy especially as a fitness business so um thank you for your time and um, i'm really excited to get to know you and um our have our listeners get to know you as a new business very cool yeah i'm i'm excited to share with with your listeners with the community just you know a little more about who i am uh what we're looking to do with the the shiva yoga studio here and uh and yeah just I'm open to, to any questions that you have for me. And I want to tell you all about our, our yoga studio because I'm, I'm really excited about what we've, um, what we've created here. And I'm excited to see the, the community that I think we're going to be able to, to build here at this location. Oh, I love that. Well, West Hollywood is all about the community. So let's get right into the questions I have lined up for you today. So I want to take a, a, a little step backward and let's just start, Garth, with what was your journey, um, you know, becoming a yogi and getting certified to teach and really making it your life's mission and passion? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I often tell, I, I share this story often when I'm leading teacher trainings, right? And and uh, a lot of students want to know this as well. You know, how did you get started? Where did where did you start your yoga journey? And I think it's a wonderful thing for us to share because we we really are walking on similar paths, right? And and some of us are slightly farther down the path, and some of us are coming along. You know, that that we're helping along the path behind us. And so it can really help, I think, students uh, um, relate to you as a teacher when they they hear about your first classes and they hear about, you know, how, how did you get into this, right? Because for me, that happened about 22, 23 years ago, right? So it's it's been a little while. And uh, if you asked me like 30 years ago, you know, or you, you said to me when I was like in, in high school or something, oh, one day you're going to be a yoga teacher, Garth, and you're going to be leading these yoga teacher trainings in, in Asia and in Europe. And I would have, I, I didn't have a clue what yoga even was, you know, I would have thought like, wow, you're crazy. You know, like I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, life just has this wonderful way of, of kind of helping us to, to find our path. Right. And 
So I often say to the students, you know, in many ways, yoga chose me. I don't, I don't feel like I chose it. I certainly never um, even explored teacher training programs with the idea of wanting to become a teacher. I was like many of the, the yoga students that come and do my training program where the goal is not to become a teacher. The goal is to deepen the practice, right? And, mm -hmm. and I want to learn more about this. And for me, this has been a lifelong journey of this practice touched me from the very first classes, right? And my first experience of doing yoga was, was with a, a friend who was, had been doing yoga a little bit uh, ahead of me and led me through a class uh, in a park in Vancouver, right? When I was, was there working on a project with him. And this was about 22, 23 years ago, right? That was my first yoga experience. Fast forward a little bit, and uh, and I was in a program in a theater school uh, at the Royal Academy in, in London, England. And in some of the movement training that we did there, we did these yoga-like postures. We did a lot of focus on breathing. They didn't even really call it yoga. And it wasn't until after I you know found actual yoga classes that I looked back and went, Oh, I've done a little bit of this. Like the, the movement teacher must have been teaching us some yoga or must have been trained in yoga because it was familiar, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I got introduced to my first ever yoga class was in Toronto, a, um, a voice teacher was saying to me and, and another friend of mine that, that were training with them, uh, you guys are working out a lot, you know, and, and I know you want to, you know, I'm, I'm at, you know, the age of 20 or 21 or, you know, and they're like, I know you want to look good and you're, you're pursuing your, your dreams of performance, but you're, you're going to get really tight, you guys, and this is affecting your instrument. You know, you got to get into something that's going to keep you open and allow your emotions to process and, you know, and allow your voice to really like ride on the breath. Right. And so this voice teachers, you know, recommended you guys should do Pilates or you should do yoga. And so we went, we had no idea what Pilates was. We had this vague idea of what yoga was. And if you think back, I mean, you know, 20, 22, 23 years ago, yoga wasn't as popular as it is now. It wasn't really part of the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it certainly wasn't in Toronto. Like there wasn't a yoga studio on every corner, right? There was, what I remember then is there was just like one or two yoga studios when we sort of looked up to try to find the, the space. And so my first actual class was at a place aptly named Downward Dog, right? Downward <laughs> Dog Yoga. I love and, it. <laughs> right. And, and it was a really good yoga studio run by um, the, these uh, uh, two partners, not uh, um, romantic partners, but both these senior yoga teachers who had been mostly trained in, in Mysore style Ashtanga, um, you know, and had been several times to, to practice uh, with the Joyce family in India. So they had this wonderful traditional studio. Uh, when I went to that first class, the two big things that I remember from my first experience was, wow, this is so hard. It's way harder than I thought it was going to be. Here I am, this young, you know, athletic, like fit guy with lots of energy thinking I'm really strong and, and I couldn't do half the things in this, you know, this, this class. And I was just like shocked. Okay, wow, this is really much harder than I thought. And it wasn't just the physical challenge. It was the mental challenge of being asked to concentrate and being asked to stay calm and breathe when my body was in these challenging positions. And I remember thinking like, wow, there's so much more to this because I, I can't even remotely do this. And I thought of myself as being a pretty fit person, right? When I, when I came there and I remember the, the, I'll never forget this moment when we came into a uh, head balance pose, or I say we, I didn't come into this pose, but the class was instructed now that's the time for these poses. And this person next to me who was like probably older than my mom, right? She just like popped right up into this headstand and I couldn't do this, right? Like, and here I was like, what a big ego shock for the, the 20 or 21 year old guy. I was like, wow, like, that's amazing. Like what that woman just did. Wow. And I, and I like floundered and tried to do this. And I thought, okay, wow, there's, there's so much to this practice that, you know, I'm, I'm just, it was hard, you know? Uh, now fast forward a couple of years when I moved to Los Angeles and when I moved to Los Angeles is when I really found some of my first, like the teachers that really inspired me. 
And I don't think I was even aware in, say, that first class or those first few classes in Toronto, I wasn't really aware of what was happening with the experience. I was so, you know, lacking in awareness where I really remember having my first like yoga experiences where I wasn't just like overwhelmed with how hard the whole thing was, was when I first started practicing here in Los Angeles, where I was struck by one, the bigger community. So many people here were doing yoga. I was like, wow, this is a thing here, you know, which it wasn't in Toronto at the time. And I remember my first classes, especially with one of my teachers that became a mentor of mine, Annie Carpenter. And I remember at the end of the class, sitting there for a few minutes, not even, maybe it was even just a minute or 30 seconds, and having this feeling of stillness and this feeling of calm and this feeling of peace, right? Mm -hmm. And this deeper connection to myself that I can honestly tell you I'd never experienced in my life. And pardon me, this was blowing my mind, like literally, right? Like our idea of of yoga, you know, going beyond the, the, the thoughts, right? And having this experience in stillness of, of yourself in a deeper way, I was having that experience. And this was, I couldn't figure it out. Like I remember saying to all my friends at the time, and I don't know if you remember, but back then there was not a lot of guys doing yoga, right? It was, you were one of like a handful of, of men in the practice. And there's, I think yoga is still dominated by, by women, but there's many more guys that are open to and are discovering it now. I couldn't for the life of me get like some of my male friends to come take class with me. But I would tell, I'm like, you guys, this is incredible. You got to come to this. You've got to come and try this because it's literally blowing me away what's happening. It's not the physical benefits. It's not, you know, we all went to the gym and worked out and we played different sports. And I was like, no, we just go into this empty room. And we're in this, this, you know, we don't bring anything in with us. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing, nothing extravagant. It's the opposite. It's like you're stripped down. You're coming in there and unrolling this mat on the floor. And the teacher instructs you to put your body in these different positions and concentrate and breathe. And by the end of this, something incredible has happened. I'm in stillness and my mind is quiet. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but it's amazing. And so for me, that became this almost addiction to this practice like this was just the greatest thing ever and i wanted to figure it out and i remember shortly after that asking annie you know i heard her talking about this thing called teacher training right and you know me being very new not having a consistent practice up in toronto and and really just starting to to like get into a daily practice here in los angeles for not a long period of time and when I asked her, she, you know, back then, you, you, it wasn't like teacher trainings were sold. She was like, no, you can't do this. You're not ready. You know? And so she made me wait, you know, to, to do a future training program. But she was like, if you keep coming here, you know, every day and I see you and I get to know you and I work with your practice, then absolutely, I think you could do one of the, the teacher training programs. And I still had no interest in wanting to teach. I just wanted to figure this out. You know, like I was like, I want to know what this technology is that's having such a profound impact on me because like I tell my students now, if you're practicing yoga, it will change your life right off your mat. The mat is the microcosm of the macrocosm of your life, right? And if you make the changes on your mat to like how you're moving under stress, how you're moving in these challenging positions, and you change your relationship to the challenge, right? And you change your relationship to the thoughts that are coming up and you change your relationship to the emotions that are coming to the surface trying to process. Well, that happens off the mat as well, right? And that challenging situation where you're caught in traffic or you're, you know, you're about to get into an argument because somebody really stressed you out or you're under pressure at work, that's not any different than you being in that challenging pose or doing that position that your body yells at you, I don't like this, you know, my hip is screaming at me. This we don't do this position, you know, and and all that same stuff bubbles to the surface. And so the, the profound impact yoga can have on you off your mat is just, I, I just, I can't speak to that enough. You know, it just, it blew me away. And that began my teacher training journey of, I want to figure this stuff out, you know, 
and, and had no interest in teaching, you know, like I, I didn't teach. I did several training programs and, and didn't become a teacher. It wasn't until Annie really talked to me about, you know, how it's your responsibility when you, you benefit from yoga. It's one of the ways that we honor our teachers is that we pass this on to someone, right? And one day after a, a class, I'd already been through several trainings with her and she came up to me and very seriously said to me after class, and if you know her, she's this very tiny, but, but very strong, very fierce woman. And she was like, I really have so much love and respect and reverence for her. Um, I used to call her kind of like my yoga mom, you know, like I looked up with her with that kind of love and respect. And she said to me after class, uh, Garth, how come you're not teaching? And just very <laughs> matter of fact like that. And I was like, uh, what do you mean? Like, Annie, I can't do this stuff. I, like uh, all I learned in teacher training was just how much there is to, to know and how little I know about this. And she was like, you know, she's like, you're gaining a lot from this practice. You're getting a lot out of out of my classes. You got out a, a lot out of this training and you're benefiting a lot from yoga. And it's your responsibility now to share this with others. Mm. And so she said, I don't I don't care if you teach a free class in the park or if you teach your friends or you teach one of your family members. I want you to share this because it's it's not our job to to hold on to this. You know, it's you're you're benefiting from this knowledge it's now time for you to pass it on and i didn't realize until later in a training program i learned that that's that's actually part of yoga and it's if you don't do that you're kind of dishonoring your teacher that shared the practice with you right it's it's one of the ways that we honor our teachers right mm -hmm. and so so i taught a free class in the park that was my my first ever yoga teaching started on palisades park in santa monica you know the the palisades park overlooks the the bluffs like you know down towards the underneath is pch and and then the um you know the beach and the ocean and it's a little thin strip this park and there's a few areas where you can kind of set up and have a nice little area for yoga and so I got all my friends to come to this first class. And I thought, I'm going to do this this summer. I'm going to, this will be my offering, my way to honor Annie. I'm going to do a class every Sunday morning, you know, at the, at this park. And so I started teaching this class and, um, and about 10 or 12 of my friends came to support me, you know, cause they knew this was something that meant a lot to me. And this first class was just, oh, wow, it was just a disaster, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like as many people, you know, you have that first teaching experience. I think it lasted about three and a half hours long and the plan was for it to be an hour. But, it's, oh but I was just like, I was just flabbergasted with like how hard it was to do, right? Like I'd, I'd done a little bit of practice teaching in the training, but this was just, I was like overwhelmed. And I remember I was like a lot of young teachers, you try to teach everything you know in every pose, you know? And afterwards, my friends were like, oh my God, Garth, like we held some of those poses for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and you're like going through everything you know about the pose. And I think it was just, it was not a great, you know, first class, but, but it was such a good learning experience. And, you know, they came back the next week and they were really good friends to me and supported me. And, and this cool thing happened because that area of the park is so busy with people jogging and coming down and walking every week, people would wander by and they would try to get my attention and be like, Hey, Hey, yoga, like, can, can we come like next week? Is this, is this here next week? And it became so, so many interruptions I just put out like a little sign that said like, you know, free yoga every Sunday. And I left like a clipboard that people could put their email on and I'd add them to the email list. And this funny thing happened. So by the end of the summer, I'm there teaching and I really grew as a teacher, just this little free class. It was, it was wonderful. End of the summer, I looked around, there's like 20 people taking one of these classes in like late August, September. I'd been there for about two and a half months and none of them were my friends. And I was like, I had this moment where I looked around and went, oh, wow, I must be doing something OK here because these are not my friends supporting me because they love me. These people came for the yoga, you know, like I don't know any of these people. Right. And I was like, this is really cool. And then the people started to bring little gifts. Right. Like, like 
they knew we were going to wrap up at the end of the summer and people brought me little things that they had made like food wise or like little somebody like bought me like, you know, a gift certificate to Starbucks or, you know, like little things that they were just like, thank you so much. You know, I've been coming for the last like month. This was such a good experience. And that gave me the confidence to go, oh, wow, like I'm. I actually, this, this feels right. This feels like something I could do, you know? And the funny thing happened after that, a lot of these people practiced at studios, you know, in the Santa Monica, in the Westwood, um, in the Palisades and, you know, in this West side LA area. And I had these, all these opportunities came my way. I got like calls and emails from people that were like, oh, a couple of our students or a couple of our members, if it was like the, the gym, like Spectrum or Equinox, they'd, I'd get this email that was like, a couple of our members are like raving about this class that you're teaching, you know, uh, in the park that they're taking. Do you want to come in for an interview or an audition? You know, we're looking for teachers. And so very quickly, this is where I kind of say like yoga kind of chose me, you know, like I had no interest in becoming a, a yoga teacher, but it was that thing that we talk about in yoga sometimes where like sometimes you can run into like a brick wall over and over again and the teacher or life is actually looking at you going like hey there's an open door over here you want to come walk through you know mm. and some of us do that our whole life we run through the into the brick wall and we say that in teacher training we say like you know if your student's not ready to walk through the open door you can't do it for them you know you can show them the door but they've got to be ready to end that suffering and walk through the open door, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like some of the things I pursued in my life up to that point, the doors weren't really opening, you know? And that was a great really like moment where I went like, here's, you know, maybe this is my dharma. Maybe this is my path because this door is open and not only it's open there's all these people standing around like waving me through you know like that are like hey come on over here man like we're waiting for you you know this is this is the place and yeah. so so very quickly i was like i could teach yoga full time not make a lot of money mind you you know you, you don't make a ton of money but i was like i calculated it out and i was like if i teach enough of these classes I could maybe make a living and do this thing that I'm just loving doing. And so that's when I made the, the decision. I was like, let's give this a try and see what happens. And it took me probably a year to a year and a half where I was still burning through a little bit of savings, you know, where I, I took that leap and, and quit my other job. I was assisting a producer here um, and doing some coaching. Like I was trained in voice and movement. So I was doing some coaching in, in voice and movement. And, um, and I was like, wow, okay, let's make this leap. And it took about a year and a half before I wasn't like losing money. You know what I mean? Like I finally got to enough classes and I remember it was like a year and a half in and then classes got a little better. I got offered a class that paid more money or I got to teach at one of the bigger studios and I booked a couple private lessons and suddenly I was like, Hey, I'm breaking even. I can play up, pay all my bills, you know, and I'm doing this thing that I love. Like it was, it was just the most incredible life for me. I was like, I can practice yoga every day. I can share this and teach yoga every day and I'm getting paid to do this. Like, wow, what a dream. You know, this is just amazing. And, uh, and that was, that was the beginning. I'm sorry. That's such a long winded. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Such a long winded story. <laughs> it, it reminds me. It's very similar actually to my yoga experience um, that I shared a little bit with you in the pre-show. And, you know, I was thinking yoga really ha was not mainstream and I came to LA and really got into yoga myself and I was an athlete and I am not the Gumby person and all those things that you're saying about the body and, um, you know, how your practice on the mat is in real life because I have to have a lot of patience with myself because my hamstrings are, are very tight and I'm still trying to endeavor to perfect crow, which will probably be my life's mission. <laughs> right. But yeah, so many great things about yoga. Um, and it's really so beneficial for your mind and your body and soul and so many things. And I, I would imagine a lot of people discovered yoga, especially with the virtual environment over the, the pandemic. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear everyone's stories. I always think it's very fascinating because there's you know, been a lot of 
um, I don't know, stigmatism, stigmatism, I would say, or I don't know, misconceptions about yoga, you know, it being something, you know, that was from India and really not for the Western world. So it, it's very, yeah. cool. thank you for sharing your yeah, story. I think it's, yeah. And, and it's, and it's our job to really, it's our job. I mean, I've spent a lot of time in India, you know, I've studied some of my teachers are Indian and, um, and, you know, so many of the teachers that brought India, that brought yoga to the West. I mean, how incredible and how grateful are we that we have access to this technology, you know, those, those early teachers that, that brought yoga here. But it is interesting. You get those misconceptions where, you know, when, especially back then, like, do you remember 20 years ago, I remember stu like, like people said to me, you got to be careful. Like yoga is a cult, you know, yes, like, like this, uh -huh. this was a serious <laughs> like thing people said to you. Yes. I and, had that said to me by some, uh, and, from some people in my life when I started it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's, people are, people are afraid of the unknown and they mm -hmm. don't understand the unknown. And we also had a little bit of what happened when some of the teachers brought over the, the early teachers coming from India, some of them also did teach some of their religious practices alongside yoga, right? And some of those mm -hmm. things became intermingled. And that's something that's really important for us in the yoga community to really emphasize to people that this is not a religious practice, you know? And, and if you uh, uh, did study with some of these different lineages, like luckily we have these great teachers like, like Krishnamacharya, who's one of the just you know, the, the grandfathers of, of yoga in that he taught many of these teachers that brought yoga to the West, you know, Mr. Iyengar and, and Patabi Joyce and, and my teachers, the Joyce family, right? And, and my teacher, Mr. Ramaswamy. And what they said to me is what he was so incredible about was distinguishing for them, because even within, within Hinduism, he had a different religious, you know, upbringing than they did. And he was very specific about like, these are yoga practices and this is my religious belief or these are my religious practices. You know, like he was very clear about separating that like yoga is not religion, you know, like this is for everyone. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is a practice for humanity, for human beings on a search for a deeper meaning to their life and a deeper connection to who they are. You know, yeah. and that's the powerful thing that we've got to keep. We've got to so so we've got to one dispel those sort of myths or or the 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 ignorance that creeps in about what this practice is. But then what we see a little more of now, if we fast forward twenty years later, you know, with yoga's prolific growth, like my teacher used to say, it's like it's like when something spreads far and wide, it doesn't have the depth that it might have had in the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we now have a huge number of people that are just like discovering yoga. And as you said, maybe they found it online or they found it through Instagram or Facebook or they found it however. And so they've got the taste and how wonderful is it that they get that taste and they're in the door, but we have to also be really like mindful as the, the people that are kind of supporting and holding up this community to teach them that it's more than doing a posture or it's more than this is not just a physical exercise regimen. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think is so key as well. Like, like I remember um, when, 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 I first wanted to, to start this studio, right? It really came about, so if we fast forward from that early teaching journey, uh, I was you know, teaching for many years. And I remember because I had studied in all these different training programs, my students were getting all these integrated practices from the different lineages and styles that I had, had spent time studying under, right? And a bunch of my students in this one class that they were with me for many years were like, Garth, like we got to change, we got to change the name of what this is, you know, like, cause, because you, you know, we've been studying with you for like 10 years and now you've integrated like Dharma yoga and Iyengar yoga and your, your practice with the Joyce family and the Ashtanga elements. And it's not really vinyasa anymore, you know, like it's, it's a vinyasa based practice you're teaching, but it's infused with all these other practices. And they would tell me, they're like, also, you're one of the teachers that's really emphasizing this like quieting of the mind or this experience of yourself in stillness. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would say to them, I'm like, well, you guys like 10 years ago, 
everybody was doing this, you know? And I think what's happening is, is yoga spread so fast. We sometimes have younger teachers that maybe that's not their main emphasis because that's, that hasn't really opened up for them yet. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's still coming on their own path. And so for me, that's, that's always been the practice, you know, like, and, and like when we opened here, I get a lot of students that come in here from the, the previous, like we're in a location that used to be a yoga works location and it was city yoga before this. And some of the former students are coming here and, and some of the students are coming from the neighborhood from like just our, our area here. And that's what they want. I'm, I'm so excited because that was my vision. You know, I've, I've always wanted us to have a like real quality focus, like a, a studio that's focused on the quality of the yoga, the growth of the community. And these two ideas that for me are the, the, the sort of cornerstones of what I have taken away from, from yoga, which is this idea of deeper connection and this idea of community, right? Mm -hmm. And as I tell people this, they just like light up, you know what I mean? Like, especially with the pandemic that we've just experienced where we've been all stuck alone and behind screens and they're like, oh my God, like this is, this is what I want, right? And that makes me kind of light up because ever since, you know, these students, you know, years ago, I, I told you mentioned like, hey, you know, we're doing things just slightly differently than some of the other classes we go to, which I knew were headed a little more in a direction of like the exercise became predominant, you know, was the, the physical, the postures, the, you know, the pursuit of a handstand or the pursuit of a big backbend became the focus. So I sort of knew I was doing things like more the way my teachers taught me as opposed to maybe the way the industry was starting to go. And it just makes me light up to, to, to think that, oh, wow, there's a ton of people that want this, you know, that they want, they don't want to just learn how to stand on their hands or put their leg behind their head. They get that this is a deeper thing, you know, they mm -hmm. get that this practice can change your life. And it's like when we say to students, it's like, you know, just because just you can do that fancy arm balance or you can, you know, balance on on one hand or do that, that big back bend, that might not change your life, you know, like, but if you're really practicing yoga and you change that relationship to yourself, that changes your relationship to everything else around you. And that's going to change your life. You know, so for me, that's the practice. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. That's so amazing. Well, let's talk, let's get into a little bit there about that was a great overview kind of of the concept and the different styles and the blends that you have there at Shiva. Um, but give us a little bit more and tell us, you know, more about like what you offer um, as far as like yeah. classes, because I looked at your your schedule and I'll, I'll let you tell our listeners, yeah. you know, other things that you offer, because there's other things other than yoga. And then Garth, tell us a little bit also, you know, about this hybrid model, because I know that you also offer the uh, the live stream classes as well. Um, so yeah. That's part totally. of that amazing so, platform. So tell us a little bit what's going on there um, in so, this new studio. Yeah. So, so Shiva Yoga as a name, as a concept, as a style started, you know, about eight years ago with this one group of students that I'd been teaching for, you know, about 10 years at the time. And that's where we, we, you know, basically branded this, this style that I was teaching so that it was a little more clear for the students. And we'd, we'd watched at different studios how the names had become somewhat meaningless. You know, I remember one day a student came up to me and said, Garth, what's the difference between vinyasa flow and vinyasa yoga and power yoga and power flow and flow yoga? <laughs> and I was like, well, these are just like class names. You know, you'd have to see what that teacher is teaching and, you know, where that came from, right? These are just modern names that have been put on the schedule. And I wanted to reconnect to this idea of traditional yoga and that that name meaning something, right? And so Shiva Yoga is born, right? And, and out of that came this, you know, me doing a, a kind of deep dive into like, okay, well, what is making these classes unique? What is making these modality, these different class modalities I'm teaching unique? They're these different teachings from my different lineages flowing. I wanted to bring everything under one umbrella and that led to the development of, of the training programs, right? My 200-hour and 500-hour and 800-hour training programs, 
which was the, the beginning of this school, right? And I spent a big part of the last like few years before the pandemic leading these Shiva yoga training programs at different studios I partnered with all around the world, right? Like when you were mentioning the contributions to the different magazines, like in the Middle East, in Europe, in um, in Asia, it's it's largely because I had the opportunity to go and partner with studios there and, and lead my, my training programs, right? Because mm -hmm. we just had a stronger training program than any of their, you know, uh, um, studios in that particular region. And so often the studios there that just opened would bring, some of them would bring yoga works over to do training programs or pure yoga or some of the places I, I used to do programs for. And some of them would bring, you know, uh, us over. And so out of that, I developed these, these class modalities, you know, which we have here at the studio. And so we have a, a Shiva Vinyasa class, we have a, a Shiva Flow class, a Shiva Power class, a Shiva Deep Deep Stretch class, uh, a Shiva Rest Yoga Nidra class. And then we're gonna be adding a few of these other modalities that I've, I've taught regularly for years as, as the studio grows and as our community grows. And, and what are each of these classes? So if you come here and you, and you come to the Vinyasa classes, the Shiva Vinyasa one or, or two, or there's a level three class, those are really your foundational classes where you're learning about vinyasa yoga. You're learning about vinyasa flow. You're learning about these transitions between poses. Uh, you're learning the foundational poses that you're going to find in almost any yoga class, right? Mm -hmm. And the poses are getting broken down and, and taught by a teacher that really is helping you in a safe way with proper alignment, right? Because what we want to be doing is we want to be focused on this bigger picture of practicing yoga, right? Not just a physical exercise practice, but we don't want to be injuring our body along the way, right? So, so that's kind of the fundamentals that, that I teach is like you want to know how to practice, right? And, and you want to, so you want to know how to practice asana, the, the poses, right? The physical, but you also want to know how to practice yoga, right? Which really involves more things with, with the mind, right? The concentration, the connection to the breath, the going into the fire, what the yogis call the tapas, right? And, mm -hmm. and letting things come to the surface and then learning to surrender and let them go, right? This processing element of the practice. This is all the deeper stuff that we're teaching here, right? Right. So if you come to the studio and you're like, I'm kind of new or I want to learn how to practice the asanas, you're probably going to want to get into the level one or the level two classes, or you're going to want to book a private lesson with one of our teachers. Or we have this kind of unique uh, um, modality here, which is a private we call it the public private lesson. You can book one of our teachers to adjust you through your whole class. So you're in class with a teacher teaching that class and a group of students, and you've got your own private teacher there that's helping you with every pose, right? Oh, so, I'm gonna need to book one of those. That's <laughs> right up my alley. <laughs> it's amazing. So I, and I didn't invent this. I traveling around teaching at a whole, like hundreds of studios over the years, you see these little great things that each studio is, is doing that you've never seen anywhere else. And it's like, that's amazing. Like, I'm going to do that when we open our, our studio, right? And so that, that's one that we added in that's great for beginners or anybody that just wants a little tune-up to their, their practice. And then on top of those vinyasa classes are the Shiva Flow and the Shiva Power classes. And the Shiva Flow are like a Power Light class. So they're a little bit of a step up from the vinyasa level two. Uh, they're also going to be less focused on just foundational poses. There's going to be some advanced transitions. There's going to be some intermediate and advanced poses. You don't have to take them, but the teacher will give options, right? And the teachers teaching the flow and the power classes will always theme the class. So the class will go in a specific direction so that you can really work on, and it might be backbending or hip opening or, you know, shoulder opening or core, right? So, so that you get a chance to really emphasize an area of your body that might need a little bit more work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, still a balanced class, but a themed class, yeah? So when you come to those flow or power classes, Classes, the sequence will have more variety than if you go to the, the level one or level two vinyasa classes. And if you come to the power class, you're guaranteed you're going to have advanced variations and advanced poses, right? That's the more advanced classes on the schedule. So if you're somebody that loves arm balances 
or loves doing, you know, inversions like head balance and forearm stand and handstand and shoulder stand, you know, those poses are going to be in those classes, as well as some bigger back bending and some deeper forward folds and deeper twists. You know, those are the more advanced physical classes that we have on the schedule. And then we have the, the Shiva deep classes, which are the deep stretch yin classes, not a lot of poses. You're holding these poses. They're all the, the hip openers, right? Where you're lying down or seated. And these are the poses you're holding for like six to eight minutes. And you're just breathing into that intensity, right? Breathing into that burn. And we call these, these are restorative, um, you know, uh, uh, practices. But I always tell people, I'm like, you know, we think of yin yoga or we think of deep stretch classes as restorative, but they're kind of intense, you know, like you're holding that, that pigeon hip opener or you're holding that, that deep stretch for your inner thigh for, for that long. Wow. Your stuff's going to bubble to the surface, you know? So I, I love these classes and, and they're actually super popular, right? Because we're in a, a, a world where we're sitting all the time. We're not stretching out enough. A lot of us in the West do a lot of like things that, that are great for our health, but they're not opening the body. They're tightening the body, right? So we do a lot of working out and running and playing sports. And, I, you know, when I was playing a lot of sports, they would they, they tell you to stretch a lot after, but you don't really do enough of it. Right. And, and then as we get older, age and gravity is also tightening things up. So these deep stretch classes are super popular and super beneficial. You know, I encourage everybody to get into them. And then the Shiva rest classes are guided yoga nidra meditation. And these are so powerful. I've been practicing yoga nidra for about 14 years now and teaching it for about 10 years, not quite as long as everything else. But it's been one of the most powerful practices in my life uh, for people that have never had a meditative experience. Sometimes the yoga nidra guided meditation can literally give you this deep, powerful meditative experience where you lose all sense of your body, all sense of, of your mind, your thoughts, and you have this real powerful experience. It's even, excuse me, it's even easier for the newer student to have that experience in a guided meditation than in like a seated meditation practice, which is often super challenging, right? Like meditation is way harder than, than an asana practice. We sit for 10 or 15 minutes and the body is hurting and the mind is wandering all over the place. And you might be thinking, I don't get it. You know, like what's this meditative experience people are talking about? And I say, well, come, come and try one of these yoga nidra classes where you do the whole class lying in Shavasana on your back. Right. And mm -hmm. you're guided through this meditation that takes you from the outer layer all the way in. And people come out of it. And it's I would say as much, if not more than any other class it's the class that blows people's mind, you know, like people, even beginners will come out of it and go like, like actually the other night, someone literally came out. I'm sitting in our reception right now, came out the door I'm looking at and was like, had this weird look on, on their face. And this guy was like, I don't know if I was like kind of asleep for part of that, or if I was dreaming, I, I don't really know what just happened there, but that was a really trippy experience. This is what this guy said to me, right? <laughs> Like that was a really trippy experience. And he's like, I don't think I've ever had that experience before. And it, it was really cool. I was like, well, that, that's it. That's, you know, you're, you're riding that fine line between I'm not awake. I'm not asleep. I'm in and out of a dream state. And somewhere in there is glimpses of, of something else. You know, he's like, yeah, that's, that's what just happened. <laughs> you know, so those are really powerful classes. And, and those are the big ones that we have on the schedule. Now we're going to be adding some pranayama, some breathing classes um, coming up. I'm going to start adding those in in about a month. And we're going to add some of the, the more challenging seated meditation classes as well. And then we're um, here. The other programming that we have at, at the studio is workshops, a mentorship program, which we're launching at the beginning of next year and teacher trainings. You know, I have this wonderful um, training program that I've taught all over the world. So we're going to be launching the, the training programs here as well to, to train uh, teachers. So. There's, there's a lot of stuff. We've, we've got lots of, lots of stuff cooking. There is lots of stuff going on, and I love the variety. Um, and I have to tell our listeners, if you're out there, um, it's like hedging your bets on a, a deep stretching or a restorative class. Um, I have to tell you, and this is like personal experience because I'm an athlete, and the first time I did yoga, I was like, I'm going to do yoga, and I want to work out. 
And I'm like, I don't need this restorative. And let me tell you, the restorative is so good for your body. Um, I just, it's so amazing. So I'm going to have to look at the schedule, Garth, and get myself in there. Because yeah, I definitely need that. Yes, yes. Well, listen, speaking of yoga and meditation and mindful and stretching and breathing, you probably had to employ a lot of that last year because, you know, our fitness businesses took a huge hit last year in the pandemic. It broke my heart in West Hollywood. You know, we were kind of keeping track here over the last year on the businesses that we were, we were losing. And I can tell you that West Hollywood lost quite a few businesses, uh, fitness businesses here. So, you know, can you share with us what was it like, to open a new business during the pandemic, you know, it's, it's a long process. You just don't decide and then open yeah. a business, you know, a week later, even though you're going into a former yoga space, it is a quite a yeah. process. And so I, I would imagine that from the time you decided and got the permits and everything, and then the pandemic hit, you're probably like, Oh crap, what, but you have to keep going, right? Because you have plans and you have investors and you got a business plan. You don't know when the pandemic is going to end. So, um, tell us just a little bit about what that was like opening up a business last year. So, um, so we had planned the, uh, my partners in this business are longtime students and we had always wanted to, uh, open the yoga studio for a long time, because what grew out of that community I told you about that, that really encouraged me to, to name the classes, right. And start this style, this, uh, system, um, what came out of that was, uh, okay, we need our own space. Do you want to, can you pause for one second? There's a delivery here that yeah, I have to just receive. So go sorry, I'll, I'll start that again. Thank you no so worries. much. So, um, so yeah, uh, I have two uh, business partners here at the studio who are longtime students of mine. And the conversation shifted once we started to talk about, you know, getting a name for our classes and, and our community growing. And I've had a number of students over the, the last few years that have been like, we got to get our own Shiva Yoga studio, you know, like as opposed to being our community within a, a larger community. And so we started these conversations about the studio quite a long time ago. And this has been kind of brewing. As you said, it doesn't happen overnight or in a week. For a long time, this has been in the dream stage or in the idea stage. And we've really been been going through exactly what we wanted to do with this particular space. Now, what happened prior to the pandemic was my uh, school that was partnering with all these studios around the world was just slammed with like, I mean, uh, bookings, right? And I, you know, had to kind of put on hold even my teaching here in LA for several years because I had so many trainings booked, mostly in Asia and in Europe. And Asia right now, yoga is just blowing up. Like it's like yoga was here maybe 25 years ago, you know, like when it was just starting to be recognized sort of by the the global population in, in some of these countries and they're loving it, you know, just like we are here. They're like, wow, this is amazing. So there's a lot of yoga going on there. Now the pandemic hits. So my, my partners uh, and I, we'd been looking every time I came back into town, we'd been continuing the conversation. We've been looking for spaces, you know, this happened pre pandemic. And then the, um, the pandemic hits and I'm in Europe at the time I'm in the Netherlands, right. When things are getting locked down and I had a hard time getting out, you know, I was on one of the last flights out of Europe, right. To when they were, they locked down about a week and a half before we did here. Uh And so after going through that initial, um, you know, the initial lockdown and just the devastation that we all went through with everything shutting down and kind of a, um, almost like a pause on life, right? Like it it was like, okay, everybody stop, you know? And, and as we know, there's, there's a lot of negative that came out of this experience, but there's a lot of positive, right? Mm -hmm. And in our, in our uh, business community, as, as like our yoga world, we saw, as you said, a whole bunch of places shut down, right? So these, these communities where, which really are like these incredible, I think like your yoga community is like this essential community center for your neighborhood, right? We saw so many of these communities just, um, you know, go out of business, right? And so 
challenging for us to jump back into that environment. But we also looked at that as like, you know, this pandemic is it's not going to go on forever. And we'd always wanted to do something a little different. Like if you've noticed the last 10 years, the yoga world has been dominated a lot by corporate, you know, large corporations opening yoga studios. And we'd wa- I'd watch that with, you know, I mentioned to you, I taught at, at the original Yoga Works, right? And, and I watched as Yoga Works expanded rapidly as they changed ownership many times. And we always wanted to do something a little different. We would, we would hold up some of these um, business models as, as not necessarily what we want to do. You know, we're not looking to become the, you know, the uh, uh, McDonald's of yoga, you know what I mean? And, and franchise a, a thousand yoga studios across the country or have hundreds of locations. We always wanted to get back to when I arrived, you know, in Los Angeles, I remember people would say, uh, I would ask around, like, where's the where are the good yoga studios, right? And you remember, because we talked in the, you know, just before we started recording, that you practiced at those original Yoga Works locations. And everybody I talked to was like, you should go practice at Yoga Works. You know, this, this, these two people started this, Chuck, uh, Chuck Miller and Mati Azradi. And it's, it's, it's a really powerful community. And it's the strong teachers, strong students. It's this incredible community, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember that's what everybody said, right? This is the quality yoga center. And a lot of those early centers ended up being bought by different companies, right? And um, which expanded them. And in some ways, we lost a little bit of that essence of the teacher run studio, right? The community based studio. And that's what my partners, Kaylin and Marina and I always wanted to bring back, right? Was this like teacher driven studio, this community driven studio. So what we partially looked at with the pandemic was some of these big corporations like Yoga Works were over leveraged and some of them went out of business, right? Like some of the bigger companies had to restructure or just were completely gone as well as the smaller studios. And so that meant that suddenly there were these open spaces Right. And we looked at that as partially an opportunity. So we were like, there's going to be more spaces that, you know, let's let's start looking, you know. So even in the middle of this pandemic, we were like, we're not going to be in this forever. You know, like we were looking at let's let's look around and see what's available. And lo and behold, we end up like here we are in this this West Hollywood location that we're in used to be Yoga Works West Hollywood. And prior to that, it was one of these beautiful community driven studios called City Yoga, um, which was here for many years. And then I think Yoga Works bought them when they were expanding. And so we really lucked out in finding this like, wow, this is just it's a beautiful space. And when we came in here, it also needed a massive amount of work, right? So, so we looked at it, and I was more in love with it than I think Kaylin was right away. And I remember we walked through, and I could just see the potential here. And I was like, yeah, we need, like, new floors. We need to, like, we need new wall. Like, it, it really needed a big, you know, overhaul. But it was it had so much character. It's got these brick walls and it, it was called City Yoga for a reason. Right. I'm sure they named because it feels like you're in like a New York, you know, loft apartment, you know, like these it's open true, brick yeah. walls. And it's really beautiful here. And we just thought like, well, let's let's make it really nice. You know, like let's let's have a really nice renovation here that we can have this amazingly beautiful space and then we're going to bring the quality yoga and the quality yoga programming and then this is going to be a place where when people start coming back this is going to be our community center you know this is we're going to have this this chance to be what we've always dreamed of which is this this community driven this quality driven yoga studio and that's what we've tried to create so we took um we took over the studio. It was like a long process of like actually getting the studio and we took it over and got the keys, I think back in June. So only a few months ago. And then, and our contractors went through like a, you know, super fast, you know, uh, renovation by like today's standards because everything's backed up in construction you know all the all yeah. the materials are are because everybody's building right like there's so much building went on this past year uh, they said that because everybody's at home right so people were like well it's time to renovate the garage or you know <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's time to build that deck on the back there. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, we're spending a lot of time at home. <laughs> right, right. So so they did an incredible job. The, the space just looks beautiful. And, and we opened, we wanted to open August 1st. We didn't quite get there. We opened like around the middle to the end of August. And we've been open for like a full month now. I think it was like August 28th or something when we officially opened. And we just have a few little things to button up and finish, you know, um, just to sort of fill out our retail shop in the reception. But but we've got, you know, I hired this incredible team of teachers and the teachers are so on board with this vision of like when I told them what what I want to do, because we've all I think in the yoga community for a while, at least that's the feedback I got from them. We've all watched like over the last 10 years these kinds of studios have somewhat disappeared. And so a lot of us have been teaching for years for, you know, corporate run studios, right? And there's something that's missing uh, um, in these environments. And I don't know what the intangible thing is or what the quality is, but even the teachers just lit up when I told them what we want to do here because many of them have taught, you know, like I have for like 15, 20 years. And they're like, this is this is like the studios that I found when I moved to L.A. or like when I came and did yoga the first time, you know, like it sounds like what you want to do is like a throwback to like 20 years ago. And I'm like, that's that's what I want to do. You know, like I want to share the teachings of how the how the teachings affected me and they affected me in a studio like this. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have this great team of teachers and um, and we've got 40 plus classes a week on the schedule. So we've got a big class schedule, you know, like most days, six or seven classes a day. Um, and the and the community, it, it hasn't been like a flood. You know, I mean, obviously this Delta variant and, and that sort of coming back has has hurt us. But as I've said to a lot of the students, like, like now we're at that point where we got to live with this, you know, like COVID isn't, it's not going away, you know? Yeah. And so you got to learn how to like, when we had that little brief opening in June, I was talking to some students after class today and we were like, that gave people a glimpse of like, okay, it's time to get back out and be with people, you know? And we're super safe here in the sense that the, we're ahead of West Hollywood, I think just actually put in place that, that everybody has to be vaccinated. But we did that when we opened, you know, all staff is vaccinated and all students need to be vaccinated or they have to provide the negative COVID test, right? And right. I just got the thing in the mail the other day that this is West Hollywood has, has a decree that comes out in like a few weeks where that's what every, every business is now falling under this. So I was like, oh great, we were slightly ahead of the curve so we don't have to change anything, right? And then we're, we're obviously um, honoring the mask mandate, right? And yeah. some students have a little pushback on that, like, ah, oh, I gotta practice with a mask on. But I, what I'm telling them is my experience, which is the first class is going to be a little rough. And after that, you forget you even have it, right? And yeah. I've been teaching my five classes a week here, and I've been practicing in tons of the teacher's classes. And honestly, I don't even remember that I have it on, right? It's like the first couple classes. And for me, the overwhelming experience is I'm back here with people. And I'm doing yoga in a yoga studio with people and my community is back, right? And everybody's saying that they're like, I wouldn't trade this for like anything. I'll be here with my mask. I want to be with my community and I want to be in this environment that's conducive for yoga practice. Because we've seen, you know, I taught all through the pandemic via Zoom and, you know, you're practicing next to your bed or in the living room and, you know, family members are walking in and interrupting you. A dog is crawling all over some of my <laughs> students. And, and I'm like, it's it's not the, the, the best environment to focus, right? It's not the best yeah. environment to, to find that that quiet, that stillness. So then the other thing that we did was we put in these um, COVID filters, you know, that, that I bought in each of the studios. And so they're on like filtering the air as well. So we've, we've tried to create a really safe space here, you know, and, you know, we're making it as open as we can for people to come back. For those that aren't comfortable coming back, we're live streaming every class. So you have the option, if you join here, you can either take a live stream or, or you can take a class in person. If you're one of our members, like if you get on the monthly membership, you uh, have access, it's unlimited classes in person, unlimited live stream. You also get um, unlimited access to the on-demand library. So all of our live stream classes live online for two months and then they just keep rolling off. They keep getting updated. So you have about 200 to 250 classes 
that even if you're like, I can't make the live stream schedule, if you become one of the monthly members, you're like, you could stay on demand, you know, if you're not comfortable coming back uh, in person, you could do everything from home. Mm, I love that. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, as I've talked to a couple of the, especially the smaller businesses that are going in, there's this new model you may have heard it's called bricks and clicks. And it's like, you know, how do you really maximize your, your retail space? Because we know it is right. not, not cheap to pay rent here in West Hollywood, right. um, you know, and how do you leverage that into other things and with this, the clicks and the virtual. So that's, that's incredible. I love that business model. I think it's here to stay. I think it's, I mean, I think even when the pandemic goes away, because it it gives people such convenience, you know, it's, it means that I can travel on a work trip for a week and still go to my regular yoga class. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm in a different time zone, I can do the on demand version of the class I missed in the morning, like at night, you know, so it's, I think it gives such convenience and choice to the students. I mean, we won't stop it when the pandemic's over. It's, It's really working, you know, people love it. Yeah, it's kind of like Peloton eased us into it, and then everybody was doing it. So thank you, Peloton. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Garth, you had met, you've mentioned community so many times in our conversation today. Really, West Hollywood, we're a very small village of 1.9 square miles. And in the beginning, you talked about the just the community around where you are. And I'd love for you just to share. So uh, for our listeners, um, they are in the old uh, Shiva's in the old yoga work studio, which is at 1067 North Fairfax. It's just by that Whole Foods down there, really close. And that's called the Fairfax District. And it's very up and coming and bustling. And every time I go down there, there's new businesses. So Garth, can you tell us a little bit about kind of what's going on in those yeah, two or three it's... blocks? It's kind of between Santa Monica and Melrose. Like what's going on over there? So, yeah, we're right. We're in the building that's right on the corner of Santa Monica and Fairfax. Um, And it really is like when you step out of our door, you feel like you're in the heart of like a little city or little village. You know, Um, as you mentioned, like there's Whole Foods is like diagonally across from us. If you are coming to our studio, we've got parking across the street. We've got a small lot, but there's also a big overflow, like public lot that's just on the other side of Whole Foods. It's on like North Orange Grove. So if anybody's looking for parking, there's street parking here, but also there's that lot on the other side of Whole Foods. So I'm, I'm sure Whole Foods has been here for ages, you know, like they're not obviously one of the businesses that just sprung up, but it's so wonderful to have them here, you know, mm-hmm. um, because they've always been such a like healthy, you know, health minded minded and health conscious business, right? Yeah. There's across the street on Fairfax, just um, going towards Melrose from us, there's this really great restaurant that opened up called Grain Traders. And I've met the owner a couple of times and the manager there, and we're going to be doing some like pop-up classes for their uh, community. And they're doing a, um, a thing where they're like... Um, offering like discounts for people that we're going to do some trades on discounts. You know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. so our students will get a 10% or something with them and and their customers will get a 10% with us. Like they're really open to like these partnerships like that. Um, And just how can we build that community here in West Hollywood? Right. I, I absolutely love them. And the food is amazing. They're, they're also super health conscious, a lot of vegan options, um, they're really focused on like like healthy, you know, especially at lunch. If you really love like different like bowls, they've got these wonderful lunch bowls that I've probably eaten, you know, like <laughs> way too many of. But they're a great business that I think is new. I think that they're, you know, they weren't here, I think, pre-pandemic. Um, and then there's also just like a lot of unique shops here that have either opened up, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if they opened up recently or if they've some of them, if they've been here and survived the pandemic. But like around the corner from us, there's this beautiful candle shop. Have you have you been to this? It's called like Candle Delirium. Yes, I do. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it's, it's, like, it's incredible. I have, we actually had Anthony, who's the owner, on, and it is fabulous, isn't it? It's so beautiful, and like like so. What I love is like a, an environment where you've got all these little eclectic, interesting shops, and you can get out of your car and walk around. You know, and then there's a lot of other little eateries around here and a Starbucks across the street. If you want to get your, you know, your cup of coffee Mm -hmm. on the other side of the street, like across from from the corner we're on. There's this another unique business that's like food just for dogs. 
sucks, you know, like, and it's, and so you've got all of these like great little unique businesses kind of around this corner. There's a post office, like right up the street from us, which immediately says like, you're in a village, you know, like as soon as I was like, Oh, I got to mail something. And you know, my, my manager was like, Oh, there's a post office, like right across the street. You know, I was like, this is great. You know, it's so it's, so it is this really wonderful little community. And we're not that far from like, there's, there's other, like, I guess not part of this Fairfax district, but if you go down to Melrose and then you turn to the right, so if you're heading down towards Melrose and you go to the right, the farmer's market is right there, right? Every Sunday yeah. there's the Melrose um, farmer's market at Melrose and La Cienega, I think is the cross street. And so we're going to do some pop-up classes with them. I reached out to, to their uh, organizers and they were like, oh, that's awesome. And in some ways, this is that other thing where I think we benefit from this this challenge we've all been going through this last year and a half because normally i think there'd be tons of yoga going on at these you know these pop-up classes but i think a lot of people are not quite back out doing this yet you know so they were like oh yeah yoga like we'd love that you know like and i was thinking like oh they probably already have like you know five other studios or, or teachers doing this like will you know will they fit us in and they were like no no we'd love to do that we'd love to collaborate with someone who's new in the neighborhood you know oh, so there, i love that there is a cool benefit to like it's it's kind of like we're the phoenix rising like after this right it's like yeah. we're coming coming from this challenging time and you know can we come back and you know can we come back in I like to think of it like, can we come back in an even more mindful way than before? Because because the pandemic did make, I think, all of us stop and reevaluate and the things that are meaningful to you. And, and you maybe pivoted a little bit and went like, OK, the things that are really meaningful to me, like, what are they? And definitely for me, it's things like community and connection. You know, and so it's like any areas of my life where that wasn't the priority, I sort of went like, OK, this is a big moment of pause. Let's like recalibrate, pivot. Like, how can we create more community, more connection? You know, and I'm sure a lot of people are doing that, you know, and it's and that's why we're going to see these great little um, interesting businesses, I think, are going to pop up and replace the ones that, that close down because it's people are going to be able to let their dreams express, you know, like somebody that never had a business is now going to go, well, what have I got to lose? You know, like we just kind of lost everything. Right. What have I got to lose? Yeah. Yeah, I love that perspective. And it, that really feels like, you know, the tone that's happening. And one of the, the silver linings that came out of this year, we never, nobody thought we would ever have. Um, so right. lots of silver linings. Yeah, I love that. Well, I think that actually is the perfect place to wrap up our conversation today, just talking about community and the wonderful community of West Hollywood. And Garth, we are so happy to have you here in our community in West Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for reaching out. And, you know, you're doing a wonderful thing with just helping us get the word out. And for your listeners, you know, come have a tour of the space. Come take a class. I mean, I'd love to welcome you and show you the space. And just drop in, you know, we've got reception hours posted on the door. You know, there's only a few times when we don't have somebody on reception and the full class schedule is posted on the door. Or you can go to our website, which is shivayogapractice.com. We also have a Shiva Yoga app, you know, which you can download from the, the either one of the app stores and just come in. You know, that's that's the cool thing is um, the people that are coming in, you know, they're having a good time. They're enjoying the classes. They kind of see what we want to do with the space. And most of them, we're fortunate, are, are joining. They're like, all right, I'm, I'm in. This sounds great. Um, but the, the challenging thing is some of the people are like, oh, you guys opened a month ago. Like, I didn't know you were open. You know, so mm -hmm. so right now we're trying to figure out ways to how can we get the outreach into the community to let people know that, oh, yeah, we're open like that. That studio that was, you know, there was a yoga studio here. We're in that space now. Yoga is back, you know, so we're doing everything we can to kind of get the, the word out. And, um, and thank you for helping because that's what you're doing with this podcast. So thank you so much. Oh, well, we love all of our businesses in West Hollywood, the ones that have been longstanding and especially our new businesses. So thank you so much. It's uh, it's really why I started the podcast and why we have, have it going. It's just so important. And um, I love being able to support our local business community. So, 
Amazing. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to come in, Barth, and see you and arrange that and get some uh, pictures for our Instagram and give you guys some Insta love. And thank you again so much. And I, you know, I think for our listeners, if you're not a yogi, you're probably very, very, very tempted because Garth's explanation of what's going on there, it just seems so yummy and approachable. So get in there and get a class. There's so much to offer. And Garth, um, I'll probably see you on the mat. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thanks, Garth.